Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamu aleyhi ve sellem. Seyyidina ve Mevlana Muhammed Mustafa sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. Ve madadakum ve nazarakum Seyyidi Resulü Kerim ya Habibi Azim. Madad ya Seyyidi Asatani Rauliyam Şeyh Adil Faiz Dağistani Seyyidi Şeyh Muhammed Azim Adil Hakani. Mevlana Şeyh Şam Kıbani, Şeyh Adnan Kıbani, Şeyh Muhammed Adil, Adil Khalik Al-Khurşi Dawani. Sahir zaman Sayyidi Muhammed Mehdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, İmam al-Hasan alayhi salam, İmam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima Tiza alayhi salam, Wa sayyiru sadatina wa sidaqin al-Fatiha. Rasulü Kerim, Fadhu billah min shaitan al-Nas. Fatiullah Ya Rasulullah Ulul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis al daif of skin of zalim al jahal but for the grace of Allah <coughs> that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us to enter into the holy month of Ramadan and give us the gift of fasting, the strength to fast and that we pray that Allah led us to see the next Ramadan and to have the strength to fast and to have the good character in which to please Allah and draw near to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah for all those who joined us on these 30 days and joined the live uh, zikrs and the live events and Allah dress everyone, their families in the communities inshaAllah. The reality of <coughs> veils and the movement through energy and the analogy and the way of teaching through these analogies so that people can remember and take the teaching in a way that can be used in everyday life. The reality of the nafs and shaitan and the soul in the example of three chairs that anytime we're interacting for us to quickly look to ourselves and ask that, who's sitting on the chair now? When I get angry, who's sitting on the chair? When I'm boastful and talk too much, who's sitting on the chair? And when facing through difficulty and keeping good character, who's sitting upon that chair? And another understanding… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this way of energy and the movement through energy was like a building that if our life is because sometimes talking about going forward through veils may not be something somebody's understanding but the analogy of a building may be easier for people. That our life is, is on this dunya, it seems like we stored at the basement because <coughs> of the nafs amar. <coughs> That as soon as we become through the age of puberty and dunya gets hold of us, our characteristics become from the basement activity. And all the wickedness and the badness of what happens within the basement of the building. And our life is to build our energy and to elevate. And when people begin to progress or they enter into the tariqahs, and the promise of the tariqahs is that if you accompany the shaykhs they'll dress you from their floor, they'll dress you from their reality. 
And for us to always remember that as soon as we enter into the tariqahs and we begin the practices, we begin this way of tafakkur and contemplation, it's like being sent upon the penthouse. Because tariqah and dunya and akhirah are in a reverse. When you see people of dunya occupy their penthouse, we said that the height of their dunya is in the pit of Jahannam. Because of the activities that happen, the parties, the lifestyle, the whole demeanor is not of a heavenly but it's from Jahannami, from the lower desires and the lower levels of reality. And they look upon spiritual and religious people as if they're the lowest but in reality their life is inverted. That their spiritual paths are like skyscrapers of paradise, means Allah described them like a lofty abode. Means their stations are high in Divinely Presence in the world of light and people who enter into their associations as if their lives are being taken to those floors. And on those floors there's not many humans left. Means that the human race has taken to a descent and not an ascension. And Allah describes, have you taken the ascension? Means the, the way in which to raise oneself is less and less viable for people. It's not a choice that they're interested in nor are they willing to make the sacrifices to reach that abode. So as we're progressing in our spiritual path for us to understand it's being placed in a spiritual high rise and on those higher level floors less and less humans are occupying. But they're not empty, those floors are filled with spiritual beings from Budal, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Akhyar, Gawthun, the Malaika, Jinn, all these different races of spirituality and different types of malaika, jinn, ins and other creations that we are not familiar with, they occupy the higher floors. And the reason that people find that in their tariqah they keep saying, it seems to be a lonely path. That they come, they start doing practices, where are all the people? And awliyaullah have come and clarified that loneliness and solitude are two different realities. Means for the seeker whom is meditating, contemplating, feeling the energy of their practices, they begin to enjoy this higher level and higher floors. They feel the energy, they connect with the energy and they connect with all the higher beings. Their loneliness becomes a solitude. They don't feel lonely although people are not around them. Because many dunya people can be surrounded by people but they feel very lonely. You can be in the midst of a street on New York with thousands of people walking, if you stop they'll trample you. But yet you feel extremely lonely because you're lost in that crowd. But the tariqah tools that when you come the shaykhs are training, teaching, make your connection, build that connection, build the connection to the unseen because those will be your companions. So as you start to go to these higher floors you feel the solitude of that floor. You feel the connection, you feel the energies, you feel the tranquility of being away from people and not to desire 
being with people. And our whole life is this battle. So we'll see with our families that we came. We came to the tariqah as if somebody like uh, these uh, comedy shows gave you a ticket and now you all went to the penthouse. And we're all wondering how we got up there. That's why the knot is saying, how I go to these high stations? People wondering, how you got up there? And the reality of finding solitude, that finding contentment is in my practices. If my practices are strong, I feel the entered energy of this penthouse, I feel the spiritual beings all around, it becomes my tranquility. It becomes the safety of my abode. And in dunya and our families their whole desire is to leave the floor. So Allah describes that, we gave you from the manna and the quail, we gave you from our heavenly realities but you insisted upon garlic and onions. Means you wanted to leave your floor and the whole battle within the household and within ourselves because you may take your family to these high floors because you came to the tariqah, the battle will be to keep them on that floor because each one's nafs begins to kick in and say, no you don't know this is very lonely, it's not lonely. This floor is not occupied by too many humans and their whole desire is to take the elevator and go down. And shaitan's whole interest is to whisper to everybody in that house, get on the elevator and go down. There's a party down there, there's so many things happening down there, there's so much excitement down there. And every day people are having to move down, go down. When we understand that our practices and our allegiance and what we've accepted from what Allah has guided to us on the path of realities, that we want to stay at these high levels, the nafs is continuously pushing to go down to the lower level. No one on the lower level can come up, so the shaitans they can't come up, bad people they can't come up. So what shaitan then wants from us? Go down, get on the elevator go down, I have uh, people waiting for you. We said it before even in their songs they say, we've been waiting for you, why? Because they can't come up. So everyone's household is under battle to get in the elevator, they don't want to come for zikr. Now you see in daily life this is the battle of the elevator, they don't want to come to zikr. And they say, oh the excuse, oh, I don't want to be there with them, but then watch at home if that's the case, they don't watch at home either because something whispering to them go down, get off this floor, you're missing out on something. It's working. Is it working? It cut off. Yeah, it's back Sadie. Hmm. Our whole life is about everybody battling to leave the floor, leave the penthouse. And people saying, I don't want to go for zikr that they use as an excuse, they don't even want to listen to it live. Then the people who are at home who always watching live they find less and less or more and more struggle to watch 
to do the practices, to do what's needed to feel the energy of your floor and where Allah has placed you. If we don't do that, we don't understand where Allah has placed us and the whole path then is understood by shaitan convincing everyone, get in the elevator, get in the elevator of life and go down, go to the lower floors for so much excitement awaits you, people await you, uh, all sorts of temptations await you. And anybody whom is progressing on their spiritual path, they have to go down for their work, they have to get on that elevator to visit relatives, peoples, communities and they understood that as soon as they go they have a, become loaded with energies, with grief, with, with all the negativities of people and they do it as their khidmat but as a result they find solace when they go back up into their floor. And that's the system in which Allah has designed of realities because the people of realities they don't belong in this abode, they merely exist for their service to Allah they find solitude in being alone because they're not alone, Allah has surrounded them by spiritual energies and spiritual beings and, and spiritual realities and that becomes the immensity. So when we have this analogy in our life because it summarizes many spiritual terms just like the three chairs because when people want to argue, oh no like this, is who's sitting on your chair? Very quick the person can understand, okay I know it, I feel like shaitan is sitting on the chair right now. And the same for our life is that I got you to a penthouse, now what are you going to do on this penthouse to appreciate it? You have to meditate, you have to do spiritual practice and then you'll feel, oh my god there's so much energy up here and then I feel good with this energy. Okay well we have to go down to visit relatives now. So you go down, you interact with people to the level that you have to but as a as a solace and a happiness, you feel happy to go back, back into your energy, back into the comfort of the, the energy field in which you've developed and you recharge your reality because that residence and the, that reality is a heavenly reality, a heavenly abode which has fewer and fewer humans on it, means that at that level they find less human people whom have that same spirituality in which they want to gather and talk realities. They can even be in the zikr, they're sitting and they're chatting and gossiping as I'm speaking. They're choosing to even in the middle of the penthouse go down. It means that they become fewer and fewer humans that you'll find at that level and that's why they turn around and keep saying, it's so, it's so lonely, it's, it's like there's nobody around, there's, I feel like uh, all, all my connections have dropped. I say, no, you're on such a high level there are fewer humans on this level, there are fewer people willing to purify themselves, cleanse themselves so that when they gather they talk about Allah and talk about Sayyidina Muhammad and talk about haqqaiqs. Those become fewer, Allah described in Bani Israel, I'm giving you from the heavenly foods and they say, no can we have some onion and garlic? Means we want to dig from the earth, we don't want what you're giving us from heaven. Instead of coming to an association and listening to the talks of the shaykh, people would sit and want to gossip about people, talk rubbish and nonsense and they find happiness in that. 
and they don't find that to be heavy. And more and more children want to get in the elevator and go down. And as they go down their energy is drooping, their characteristics are dropping and the characteristic is no longer from the lofty stations. Because as you go down the elevator your demeanor, your character and everything about you will have to change because they don't like heavenly people down there. They're like people whom their orientation is confused, their images are modified and changed and that becomes our whole struggle is how to keep yourself in the penthouse suite from paradise. How to find the solace and the happiness with your practices and all the spiritual beings that Allah has surrounded you with. And how to avoid shaitan's temptation come down to us and by means of his music, his movies, his talks, his every type of energy that he's putting is to call people to the lower floor, come on down. Means then you have to make a conscious effort to get on that elevator and to keep going down into places where you don't belong and to be around people whom you don't belong and to have discussions that you shouldn't be partaking in. Those whom do that for family ties and then they find a happiness to quickly go back home, wash and clean themselves and others whom actually find the comfort of going down and gossiping and talking bad and, and all of the activities of the lower floors and the lower people of the lower desires. And that becomes the understanding of this analogy at tonight is instead of people trying to you think you know how high they are and, and what type of station they reach by virtue of being somewhere or watching for years. It's a matter of where Allah placed you, are you able to feel the energy and find your patience in your solace and your happiness in your solace. That I'm not alone although nobody's around me. But I'm surrounded by energies and the, and the dress of Divinely Grace and with that I find much comfort. And I recognize how shaitan is trying to pull me out and down and that becomes my struggle. And that can be anywhere because there are people whom can enter to a zawiyah but they do none of the activities of the zawiyah. They sit in the gossip. We talked about before that there are pickpocketers in the haram. If you're going to do a crime on the street it's a one sin. If you come to haramain and you want to sin it's one million sins. Means the zawi of the shaykh is a haramain. You're coming with prophetic light, you're coming with the tajalli of awliyaullah to learn. And once you make your living room the haramain because as soon as the zikr night starts the angels circumambulate your living room all the way to the throne of ar-Rahman. Means then what happens when that zikr starts means then Allah writing goodness and blessings and all of these good realities from the paradise people and the, the people of the lofty abode. Pen, it's hard to say penthouse because so many nasty people do na nasty things. But from the paradise abodes that their homes are within the, the pinnacles of heaven, then they conduct themselves from the highest levels of reality, highest manners, they came to be dressed by the lights. They came to abstain from nonsense conversation. They came to stop gossiping, stop backbiting. It's like being a crook on hajj. You saw them when you go for hajj, say, people are pickpocketing people, what this guy came… all the places he could steal 
He came here to steal because shaitan is strong in the person. The same, same as the conduct when we're at home listening to the zikr, say, this is the haramain now. This is the abode of no haram that Allah dressed me, I keep myself with the best of manners, best of conduct, especially the zawis of the shaykhs. They come with the best of conduct, Allah's watching, Prophet watching, only Allah watching. They come to be of service, to clean, to do their part, to come to listen, to learn knowledges and definitely not to backbite, not to talk, not to gossip. To keep the practices and the way that the tariqah is teaching at least for those few hours. And then for the families that will have trouble because this is the immense force of life. Don't think that when your children are small everything is great. That's just the foundation that you give to them. But by now it's almost by 10 to 11 years old, Mawlana Shaykh says 12. By 12 the bad character has set in, means when you're not around they keep wanting to press the elevator to go down. So if you understand this analogy they don't have to really go down. Anytime they press that button to go down they're clicking on something inappropriate, listening to something inappropriate, watching something inappropriate. And they don't do as you say but they do as you do. When they see that the, the parent is not respecting the tariqah, not respecting the talks, then they think the whole process is nothing to be respected. So when shaitan whispers to them they quickly press the down button. They don't find any holiness in it or they have no sanctity in the way of it. So they don't do as we say. They do as we do. When they see the righteousness of character by the example of the parent that they sit, they meditate, they do their practices, they believe in what they're being taught, then like we said before with the children's love they also believe, they also keep quiet. You see the parent with the good adab, the child next to that parent will tell other people, shh, Shaykh is talking. Because the child saw the manners of the parent and understood that. But when the parent is gossiping and talking, the kid is also talking because their concept is, who cares what this guy is saying, he's nothing to us. Say, no, but my lips say, no, he's a shaykh, he's something for us. But your actions say, no, he's absolutely nothing for us. Because as he talks, I love to talk to other people and gossip. Because what he has to say is of no importance and the children they do exactly the same. Those are the same children talking, gossiping. Means our way is a fight against that button. And if we don't do by our own example that battle is already lost because even those with all their example shaitan is fiercely attacking their families. And each one now pressing button, pressing buttons. And each time they press the button they're entering into more and more difficulties, more and more bad characteristics. And in one of those buttons that they press they'll no longer be allowed up. And that becomes the difficulty of life. They begin to orient themselves in different directions, different characters and different acquaintances. Because on one of those buttons if they go down they may meet the wrong agent of shaitan in which changes their whole life's directions. So it's a fierce battle, it's a fierce battle to have good character, to find the energy that Allah gave to us to keep it, to, to manifest it so that I find my comfort in being alone because I'm not alone. I'm surrounded by the love that Allah has given to me and my sustenance and food is the deliverance of these talks. I said, this is the way that we were raised when the shaykhs would talk, the vibration and energies that would come out that was our sustenance for the day, for the week. You were lucky if it came out once a week. 
And with that we sustained ourselves with all the knowledges and tajallis and throughout the week building the connection, building the connection. But life has become much more harder. We pray that Allah give us a greater understanding and people to reflect, not to quickly go next, next subject but to reflect how to keep ourselves at these lofty stations. How to find the energy and where Allah surrounded us and less and less humans are on these floors. And how to avoid pushing our button to go down floors. And the pushing of down on these floors is everything that's available to us. Every social media, every electronic device, every gossip, every whisper, everything is geared to press and go down a floor, take your energy down a level. Because every time you go down there's a different shaitan waiting to greet you. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.